Welcome to St. Mary's Church on this 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our priest celebrant is Father Frank Leoy. I am Diane Gove, the lector. Father Miller will serve as the cantor. We begin our liturgy with the singing of the entrance antiphon for this 15th Sunday. As for me, in justice, I shall behold our face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. As for me in justice, I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. O Lord, hear a cause that is just, Pay heed to my cry. As for me in justice, I shall behold your face. I shall be filled with the vision of your glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. The word of God is like a seed planted in us, and we await the bountiful harvest. And so as we begin, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, bread of life, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, sower of the seed, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, fruitful word of God, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace through people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow came down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. The seed that falls on good ground will yield the fruitful harvest. 
The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Thus have you prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its clods, softening it with showers, blessing its yield. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have crowned the year with your bounty, and your paths overflow with a rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing close the hills. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks, and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The seed is the word of God, Christ is the sower. All who come to him will have life forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep, 
And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At first glance, the sower in our Gospel seems to be doing a poor job in sowing. Now, I grew up in the city, and I knew little about farming. I did spend two years as a priest in Dryden and Groton, outside of Ithaca, and saw firsthand how hard farming is, whether a dairy farm or a crop-producing farm. But if I were sowing seed, I think I would know enough not to throw seed onto a path or a rocky ground where it had little chance of germinating. I probably would take time to pull the thorns first so that they would not choke the plants later. And I would try to sow all the seed in rich soil. But this parable is not about what we would do, but what God does. God does not limit where the seed goes. Everyone gets a chance to receive God's grace, no matter what obstacles may be in the way. God's extravagance gives goodness a chance to bloom in unexpected and unlikely places, allowing it to bear fruit far beyond expectations, 30, 60, or 100-fold. Now, it's natural to listen to the gospel parable and try to determine which spot on the ground we are. Am I the rich soil or the rocky ground? If we're honest, perhaps we realize that we can be each of those options at different times. You know, sometimes God's word just doesn't take root and is choked off by material concerns to which I give greater priority. Of course, all of us certainly would like to be fertile ground for God's living, transformative word as often as possible. Now, when Jesus offers his call to redemption, we as believers have to respond with greater conviction. And so when Jesus' followers ask where to follow, he responds, come and see. And with these words, Jesus invites them to a lifelong transformation through education and faith. And just as a seed takes time to germinate and grow and come to fruition, So it takes time in us for God's word to come to fruition. Our coming to Mass each Sunday, or even now watching it on the computer, on a a TV screen, faith formation for children and adults, our reading of the Bible, our practice of Christian virtue, our concern for those in need, all of this slowly transforms us into disciples into followers of the Lord Jesus. God's word comes into our lives liberally and free of charge. The only thing we need to do is to prepare for it, listen to it, cultivate it, and bear fruit. As our psalm refrain says, The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest.
and now our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We who have received God's mercy humbly ask for the needs of the church and of the world. Our response is, Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For the church, that the seed we sow may produce good fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold, we pray. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For the most vulnerable among us, that the thorns of disease, hunger, and poverty may be cleared away, allowing God's goodness to flourish, we pray. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For farmers and all who work the earth, that they receive a just wage and abundant harvest, we pray. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering in the heat of these summer days, especially the elderly, young children, and those who have difficult medical conditions, we pray. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. For all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. For all our intentions, spoken and unspoken. We pray. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Lord God, bringer of the harvest, you give us every good thing. Grant what we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Usually at this time, the ushers would take up the collection. But since that is not possible, we encourage you to make your Sunday offerings either by mailing in your envelope or by using electronic giving or credit card, both of which are available on our parish website. Thank you for our generosity. Our offertory antiphon, let not my enemies exult over me, and let none who hope in you be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me, and let none who hope in you be put to shame. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I have trusted. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me, and let none who hope in you be put to shame. Guide me on your truth and teach me, 
for you are the God of my salvation. I have hoped in you all the day long. Let not my hand of ease exalt over me, and let none of you be put to shame. In prayer, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, only Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, by the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, in giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis and St. Hyacinth, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Salvator, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, 
and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his decrees. With all their hearts they seek him. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. It has been a long Catholic understanding that when circumstances prevent one from receiving sacramental communion, it is possible to make an act of spiritual communion. According to St. Thomas Aquinas, spiritual communion is an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the most holy sacrament and lovingly embrace him. At a time or in circumstances when one cannot receive sacramental communion. And so, let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow. Through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth and announce the gospel of the Lord.